Hello there. Today we're going to be adding what I believe is a clown placostomus to my tank. Uh, it's being rehomed. Somebody dropped it off this morning. I forgot to ask what species of placostomus it was, but based on the fact that it's a small one, about three inches, uh, clowns get up to four, but three is more average. It's got a uh, brownish orange color pattern. It seems indicative of the pictures I saw for clowns. And the previous owner also dropped off some hardwood that was particular to the diet of this one, which clowns are a placostomist that primarily eat wood. So uh, in addition to dropping off our actual specimen, uh, she brought over that driftwood. A piece is down here. It's really nice driftwood where it's already got the plants rooted to it and growing off the corner of it. I didn't have enough room for the driftwood. I had to pull some rocks out. I had a couple rocks here, took one out, flipped another one kind of vertically. And then in the back, there was a really big rock behind this very large sword plant. I took that out and there's a, as you can see, a second piece of driftwood that also again has some nice rooted plants to it. So at this point, I'm gonna, well, I guess I'll mention clown placosmus have a lifespan of 10 to 12 years previous owner said she had this one for eight or nine years so this guy's pretty old kind of like going to the retirement home for him so at this point I'm going to cut this and I'm going to pour the entire bag through a net into a bucket to not add the you can see it's kind of brown he's been in here for a while and stressed so we don't when you're doing this you don't want to add the dirty water to the tank ideally and he's been acclimating for about three hours. I did it really long and slow because again, it's a older fish, been in the same tank for a long time. They tend to not travel and reestablish as well. So you gotta be kind of careful. I'll be back in a second. All right, so we have our Blacostomus in the net and we're back. We're gonna let this guy free. Also in here we have school of neons, a breeding population of red wag platys, seven or eight white neon tetras. There's also a green phantom placostomus, and placostomuses can be pretty territorial, but this is a medium-sized tank, 115 gallons, and there's a lot of rock work, wood, and plants, so they should have no trouble avoiding each other. Um, there's also a pea puffer in this tank, often really hard to find. He's usually hiding in the giant plant in the middle. And uh, two small crayfish are in here as well. Uh, and there are a pair of clown bodia. There's one of them down there underneath that plant with the neons. And I think I think that's, uh, well, we put 50 ghost shrimp in here in a video a few weeks ago and I thought they had all gotten eaten probably primarily by the tetras and puffer, but I did see a large one this morning, given the number of hiding spots, there could still be several of those guys hiding out and surviving in here. Oh, and the quarry cats, there's four or five quarry cats in the tank. There's one. And there's one of the crayfish I was talking about, little river crayfish species, small claw. Quite good, as you can see, it just constantly walking around and picking detritus and algae off of things to eat. So I hope you enjoyed uh, seeing the rehoming video of the Royal Pleco into my tank. Thanks for watching.